the end of the turn of the century, the U.S. Army and many other armies throughout the world were still going into battle with firearms like this. Double action revolvers, maybe in some cases still single action revolvers. But then there was this man named John Moses Browning, one of the most prolific inventors and gunsmiths of all history. Fortunately, he was on our side early on. He invented and came up with more designs than I care to talk about at this time. But one of his most coveted designs to this day and one of the most iconic American military firearms in the handgun genre is the Colt Model 1911 and its variances. Here before us today, fortunately, we have a few examples. We're going to talk about collecting them more so on what you can see in values today, what you may want to pay, what you wish you could pay, and what the future may bring on this wonderfully designed and classic American firearm. And I'm going to start out with this one right here. The first thing we're going to do before we do anything is we're going to drop the mag out of this bad boy. We're going to keep that finger out of the way. We're going to rack that to make sure there's nothing in there. Let that down. We're going to drop the hammer back down and reinsert the magazine. Note in the case of this 1911, which I'm going to tell you about because this is a pure 1918 manufactured World War I beauty in 95% plus condition with the original two-tone magazine with the lanyard ring. So if you're into collecting Colts, this is where it starts. World War I, this gun as they say was manufactured in 1918. It is completely original right down to the finish. The walnut double diamond checkered stocks. And you can see the serial number right there. And here's that all important part right here. Right along the, on the slide. Can you see that, Adam? Model of 1911 U.S. Army. And here's the other interesting aspect you'll see on these issues to scare people at one time. They say, where did you get that? You're not allowed to have that. And you notice here on the bottom of the frame, right here on the dust cover, property of United States. Is that what it says? <laughs> property of the United States. So total military 1911, the original, the original, the bluing, the magazine, stocks, everything. And our segments, as you know, for the most part, aren't always about history. They're about value. Today, in today's firearms market, a 1911 with this much finish left on it, original condition, has a great bore, the action works, everything is correct. These guns now value in the $3,000 to $5,000 range. And there are some variances on it. This is a Colt. And in World War I, there was only Colt manufacturing, Springfield Armory manufactured, and very rarely UMC, which is Remington, UMC. I think I have that right, Remington, UMC. But most of them in 1911 on, for the First World War, were manufactured by Colt, and this one is a beauty. If you have one, value yours, if it's in this condition, in the same range. They are worth thousands of dollars today, and one of the most collected semi-automatic handguns of all time. Now, here's something else that just turned up recently, and here's your next variance. I'm going to tell you how certain things and certain changes on these firearms affect their value. So we started with a superb example of an original 1911, but after 1923 the military asked for some changes on these firearms, both from Colt and the other, other companies that would manufacture them for World War II, of which there were plenty of, in order to get booted up for the war. This is a 1911A1. And the changes in this, of course, before we do anything with it, we're going to pop that mag out, which is not the correct mag on this one. We're going to clear that, make sure there's nothing in there, drop that hammer back down. And we're going to put this non-correct magazine back into this firearm. This is a Colt model of 1911 U.S. Army, but this is a 1911A1. Does it say 1911A1 on that one? No, it doesn't. Right here. There we are. On the frame. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, what we found out about this firearm, this is a recent acquisition, and this is how it's going to change things. Um, most of these firearms were parkerized. They didn't have a blue finish like this one does. Now, this could still be correct. Very few had a blued finish when it came time for World War II. And if you don't know what parkerizing is, parkerizing is a very flat 
almost a dark gray finish where all military firearms went to, particularly 1911A1s for the Second World War. However, there were some that still retain somewhat of a blue or a dew light type of finish, which are kind of rare. This one we're still trying to figure out, but as we examine this gun for purchase, we realize that though the stocks on this, which are correct color and plastic and maybe keys, we don't think are original to this firearm. We also noticed right off the bat that the rear sight looked to have been changed out as well as the front sight. It's a little higher than it would have been normally for mil spec, so that may have been changed out. The differences between the 1911 of World War I and 1911 A1 World War II are subtle but clearly visible, starting with an arch mainspring housing. And you'll notice on the original, which I'm going to set down by this, that it had a flat mainspring housing. And you notice that the grip safety was quite as long and didn't stick out quite as far as it does on this one. That was to prevent hammer bite. When that slide comes back and runs that hammer back, you can either get slide bite or the hammer would pinch. So one of the corrections they made was to enlarge and extend this grip safety out a little bit, make it easier to disconnect, to fire the firearm, arch mainspring housing. And another interesting nuance, and you'll see here is they cut back on the frame and shortened the trigger reach. And as I put these together, I think you can see that clearly. Longer trigger, no cutaway, and here it's cutaway on the frame. And that was so smaller hands could reach the trigger. Now what's happening today, 1911A1s, they have increased in value like you wouldn't believe. Some excellent examples of this firearm can sell for as much as $3,000 and more depending on the condition once again and any other special traits to it. And keep in mind, not only did Colt make them, but they were made by Remington Rand, the uh, office machine company. They were made by Ithaca. They were made by Union Switch and Signal. And they were also made by Singer Sewing Machine Company. You should also know, should you find one in your collection or you've inherited and it says Singer sewing machine manufactured on the side of it, I guess I have an obligation to let you know that you have a firearm that may be valued in excess of $50,000. They only made 500. This one being a Colt, as we took this apart and looked at it, the other thing we saw about it was we didn't see that the slide was numbered to the frame, the serial numbers here on the frame. We want to see those digits also when you, re when you pull the uh, firing pin block out. It should be numbered on the slide as well. In the case of this one, it wasn't. So what we have here is sort of a 1911A1 that's been kind of tweaked a little bit and not as authentic as we like to see them, parkerized and in great condition, but still has a value. Now, the difference that it makes in a firearm like this, it's still a 1911, still a 1911A1, it's still a World War II firearm, and it does have good finish and fit. But we would value this gun today probably at a thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. Now, if you find, as they say, pure and mint, parkerized, little beauty, you can double that in some cases. But we've been seeing a lot of them sell in the uh, fifteen hundred to twenty-five hundred dollar range recently. And those are online. Uh, guns that uh, people really sell. We see plenty of them. That's another thing that I always like to remind people when I talk to folks about the values of things, particularly in today's world of the World Wide Web and the Internet. Anytime you see some of these firearms on there that are $4,000 and they stay on there forever, you know what? They're not worth $4,000. You want to look at the firearms that actually sell when they're sold at auction, either on the Internet or live. When the gavel goes down, that's what they're worth. So all Colts, 1911s, 1911A1s are highly collectible, but condition and authenticity and complete is what it's all about. Finally, in closing, and I'll show you some another like, nice accessory. This is one I turned up some time back, and this has got all kinds of stuff going on. We'll let Adam take a look at it first. As you look at it, this gun, I believe, was uh, built up at one time for competition. This is a 1911, World War I vintage, I think also 1918 or 1919, but you'll notice that this has an arch mainspring housing, which wasn't indicative of uh, the early model, 1911. You'll notice there is no cutout here. There's no uh, reduction in the frame to make the reach, so it still has the original 1911 configuration here, also in the grip safety. But what we noticed as soon as this gun came about, it also has replaced stocks, it has Hogue rubber grips on it, but 
before I pick this up, Adam, I'm going to just clear that and make sure everything is safe as we do that. The other thing that I saw on this one right off the bat was, and this is another comparison that we can do here, this being we're going to use the original 1911 to do this, is you'll notice that the slide, re slide release, which is this item right here, has been custom made for this firearm. It's super long and you'll see the original here on the 1911 is only this size, the slide release, what releases the slide when you're loading, unloading, or going into battery. So someone had made this one up at one time, which extends all the way back to here, which I thought was kind of cool, and I really like this a lot. I've shot this gun a few times. It's extremely accurate, and one of the reasons also for being able to hit what you're aiming at, it doesn't have military sights on it. It has what's called vintage millet sights, and you'll see there's an upside-down cross on that front sight and this almost winged configuration here on the rear sight. Now where does this fall in collectible category of Colt Model 1911s? Well, it's certainly not a pure gun, but it certainly has a good look to it. It's very functional. It has a few changes and having an arch mainspring housing added to it. And I took this gun out and fired it a few times. Naturally, it's in 45 ACP, which I should have mentioned on all of these. I think everybody is pretty much aware of the cartridge they fire. But I took this out and threw a couple of targets up, and boy, this thing was right on the money. At one time, they jeweled the, or attempted to jewel, which is a little machining decoration on the uh, chamber there. So some, I, don't, I don't really have the complete past of this firearm, but I've had this one stashed for a while, because I like this. I, I seldom shoot it, but uh, I like what they did, the changes they made in it to make it into maybe a competition gun, maybe for the 1960s or something like that before Ipsic grew to where it's become today. So value-wise, once again, it's all about values. A 1911 that's kind of been tricked out and messed around with like this is still a 1911. It's still a Colt, but the value would probably be in the eight to $12 hundred dollar range it may be more appealing to other folks but I think in realistic terms I think it's an eight to twelve hundred dollar model 1911 with a few tweaks when you are out collecting these or if you do have one I think one of the nicest things to find I have one hanging right back here this is a nice touch to try and find if you should go to a gun show or get around somewhere here's an original flap holster, US mark flap holster, and belt, untied, leg strap hasn't even been untied on it, here's the buckle, sorry about that, we're real proud of that right there. This is a nice accessory in its own right, if you're collecting 1911s or maybe you just want to have one 1911, try and find yourself one of the original holsters, it really makes it nice. And in closing, I will close with something a little bit more modern, just to give you an idea what things have evolved to, but you'll still see there's still 1911s. Here's a firearm made by a good bunch of boys down in Texas by a company called STI. And so here's a modern version of a model 1911 single stack. We call them single stack because they have a single stack magazine. And this one was made for competition in this organization right here, United States Practical Shooting Association, USPSA. Wonderful organization, lots and lots of fun, great competition, wonderful shooters. But you can still see, it's still a 1911, few extra nuances, and you'll notice that the slide serrations on this are far different than what they are on the original models, which were just these straight up and down lines. So from this, to this in 105 years, but still the same firearm, still one of the most sought after and most loved semi-auto pistols of all time, the Colt Model 1911. Thanks for watching.